Before we begin, I think I should take the time to say that there might be some slight visual spoilers for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I try to keep it as minimal as possible, but for certain things, but if you are very picky about seeing gameplay laid stuff, uh, then you have been born. Anyways, on to the video. Hey everybody, Link Tarshwasu Spirit here, and today I'm doing something a bit different today. So, basically what I'm deciding to do is, well, make a review of both the Switch and Breath of the Wild. We will be starting with the Nintendo Switch first. So, without further ado, on with the video. Review. Thing. I, uh, I'm not very good with this type of format. Okay, so, what the Nintendo Switch comes with is a control grip for the Joy-Cons. Whatever these Joy-Con extension things are for when you hold them one by one, you know, individually. It comes with an HDMI cable for the Switch dock. A charging cable for the Switch that you can plug into the dock itself, which is right here. The actual screen slash console of the Switch itself, as you can see here. And, well, the Joy-Cons itself. I got the colored versions, which are blue and red, as you can clearly see. Interesting to note is how small the Nintendo Switch cartridge is are when compared to, well... Give me a second here. The... Nintendo 3DS cartridges. As you can see, there is a pretty big difference in the size of these things. Next, we'll take a look at the Joy-Cons. This right here is the left Joy-Con. Uh, right where you dock it, there are the hidden L and R triggers for when you're using single Joy-Con mode. And back here is the release button for the Joy-Cons. This is one of a few problems that I have with the Switch. The way that they, where they put this is in a bit of a hard place to hold from where it is considering on where the Z, L, and Z, R buttons are. Which means you can't get a good enough grip on it, which causes some problems when trying to release the Joy-Cons. It's not major, but... As you see, if I try to release it the way they do it in the trailers, they it, the switch will just start to come out of the dock, so you have to hold it down with one hand in order to release the Joy-Cons. Nothing major, but it's still something that should be noted. Another kind of minor inconvenience from what I can tell with the Switch, this might not be the case, but it seems like it to me. It's how you turn off the Nintendo Switch. So, you would think that you can just press the power button, which is located at the top of the Switch. It's probably not hard to see it, but no. It seems to put it into sleep mode, so you have to hold it down, it'll bring you to that power say, to that power options menu. You have to go to power options and turn off. That is the only way I can guarantee you being able to turn it off. It seems like a minor convenience to me, and there's... Like... But... There's not really much you can do about that. Again, I could be wrong, and you can just tap it to turn it off, but when I do that, and I turn it back on, the app, you know, the game that I was still playing, will still be open. The software will still be open. So, 
I have no idea what to say about that, so... Yeah, just keep that in mind. Also, another thing to note about the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons involves these Joy-Con extension things for when you are either wanting to just hold each Joy-Con independently, not part of the controller, or when uh, doing multiplayer. As you see, right by the wrist strap, there is a lock thing. To slide it on, you have to take that off, which that is easy, but then the matter of taking it off, even if you disable, you know, when you take, release the lock, it is hard to get a hold of the release button and get the Joy-Con to slide off. As you see, I had to apply a bit of force to take it off. You would think that once you would press the button to release the Joy-Cons and the lock is removed on the extension, that they would just slide off with little to no resistance. But no, you have to try very hard to do that. Luckily, now, for me, the easiest usage of releasing the Joy-Cons is actually from the controller grip. Because of how it's shaped, it's kind of easy to get a grip on the Joy-Cons and the release button. So, that is the e easiest thing I can say for the for that like the dock switch is hard a uh, handheld switch is kind of simple to do but yeah so eh uh, just be careful when using the uh, Joy-Con extenders, that's all I can really say. Just be careful with them. In handheld mode, the Nintendo Switch does have a very good screen and a kinda decent battery life. Uh, with Breath of the Wild, I'm pretty sure I... with the regular default factory settings for the Nintendo Switch in the terms of brightness, uh, which automatically has the auto brightness turned on. It will last about three hours for Breath of the Wild, more or less. And the screen itself, it has a pretty good resolution, and the sound quality is very good. So, yeah, I've actually used it in handheld mode a lot more than uh, console mode ever since I got it, but that was mainly because it was during the week. The week that I was doing that in handheld mode. I have done it a few times in the weekends when I'm doing something on the computer. I can now multitask like I can with my 3DS with my console games. Good. But, yeah. So, it is good as a console as well as a handheld as it was supposed to be. In fact, looking at the Nintendo Switch library here on the eShop, there's actually a pretty decent supply of games, only like... Uh, like, three months after release. Like, if we look here, there is a very big selection of games. Like, there's Arms at the top there, because that's the most recent game that has been released. And, yeah, there is a pretty decent selection. And, as a lot of you probably know, there is a huge... There's, like, a very big list of third-party support for the Switch. So, yeah, that is great. We even have, like, Square Enix, which I, I really hope Kingdom Hearts 3 shows up on the Switch. It, all the trailer... Like, even the orchestra trailer that... Is very recent. It doesn't say anything about Nintendo Switch, but I have my fingers crossed that Kingdom Hearts will make it on the Switch. Come on, it supports Unreal Engine 4. <laughs> Square Enix, please. 
I want to play more Kingdom Hearts on my Nintendo consoles since I uh, do not have a PS4. And another great thing about the Switch as is that there was actually no region locking on this console. As you see, I am booting up into a Japanese uh, eShop account that I created. It's pretty simple to do. Uh, my friend actually recommended that I create one, and so I'll recommend it to you as well because you can get some Japanese exclusive games. Though, there, at the moment, I do not know how adding funds work. Uh, neither does my friend. But what I can say is you can use credit cards for this. It doesn't seem to matter what region it is. So yeah, there's nothing more about that. But I have no idea if you need specific eShop cards to add funds to it since he hasn't tried and neither have I yet. I don't even... I haven't even bought anything from the Switch eShop yet in the US one yet, so... Yeah. Uh, also, maybe if you don't know ja a lot of Japanese like me, don't play RPGs. <laughs> Unless you... Like, I guess if you can figure out basic options, then maybe. But <laughs> I'm not confident in my ability for stuff like RPGs that are in pure Japanese. So... Yeah, there's that. Now I'm getting the menus of the eShop. It's kind of simple, but... Kind of not. I mean, if you know the layout from the English version, it's not too hard. So, yeah. Now let's look at some of the games that I actually know a lot of stuff. Know certain things about so that I can be able to talk about them. Just Dance 2017. I'll be flat out honest. I hate this series. I'm not really much into dancing games. Uh, but what I can say is, like, I haven't really played this game, but I do know from what a lot of people, like, I do know that the Switch has very good motion controls with stuff. Since, like, you know, you can use them in Breath of the Wild for some stuff. For, s like, aiming a bow. But we'll get to that stuff later. Uh, but, yeah, so... I... If that's your thing, it might be worth checking out. Since, for one thing, you don't have to worry about a sensor bar. Uh, so, yeah, there's my two cents on that game. 1-2 Switch. As a lot of people seem to share the opinion on, this should be a pack-in. It's not worth the 50 bucks. It's basically like what the Wii Sports games was for the Nintendo Wii. And also, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't try to make it in any shape or form a Game & Warrior. No, not Game Warrior. A WarriorWare game. Sorry <laughs> about that. Yeah, I just... I don't know, I find that interesting, but I guess I can understand why. It just seems... The way that the gameplay is from what I've seen, it seems a lot like a... Uh... WarriorWare title. So... Yeah, that just... is surprising to me. Minecraft on the Nintendo Switch. Basically, if you like the console editions of Minecraft, and would like to take that version on the go, this is... A very worthwhile game. I mean, just look, it's only 30 bucks. It's one of the cheapest. Like. Games that are kinda. Big. On the Nintendo Switch marketplace. I mean, it's cheaper than 1 2 Switch, and really, that should not be worth 50 bucks. So. Yeah. Also, it seems that it can support even bigger world sizes than the Wii U version. Like, I believe the... I think it still has the a small, medium, and large world size, but the actual sizes of those uh, templates are 
bigger than they are on the Wii U, from what I've been told. So, yeah. I'm definitely going to pick this up, but if you want the Switch version, you might want to hurry up if you've seen the uh, E3 announcement of about Minecraft. So, yeah. If you have the Switch and you want it, you might want to pick it up because they are going to stop distributing new copies of regular Switch version along with uh, the other console versions like Xbox One so yeah get on that Snipper Clips this game I actually have the demo for and so I will be showing you a bit of gameplay from it uh, it takes a while for me to actually get into it since I never played it in console mode so I kinda tried to load it with both Joy-Cons in the controller but that didn't doesn't work so uh... just wait for a bit until I get this oh, uh, okay did I, okay uh, no, I didn't get that working there. Uh, post commentary. Okay, I got it loading now. So basically, what it seems like, while I have seen an entire playthrough of this game, I don't have the money to purchase it at the moment since I don't have any in my account. I only have six cents in my eShop account for 3DS and Switch. But basically, you seem to take control over what I can kind of assume are the two Joy-Con people in a sense based on some things about them and you solve little challenges. It can be completed single player like I am here but it is a bit slow it gets a bit slow because you do have to switch between both characters in single player and I didn't really I didn't think I had time to like ask one of my friends to help me out with recording this today since I wanted to record it today record all the stuff today and get it edited today or maybe get it uploaded today but that depends on how long it takes to process it so yeah you basically one of the main gimmicks of this is rotating your Joy-Con people's bodies around and Well, cutting them as you can see here. Uh, you can also reform the characters. And yeah, it is a pretty fun game, though it's probably more fun with two people which as I said I didn't get a chance to play with two people but yeah if you feel up to it and you know that you have a friend that would be willing to play it with you I'd suggest picking it up it seems pretty fun I've seen a complete playthrough of this game so I do know uh, what to expect from it I'm just kind of on the fence on wanting to get it myself, though I might, though it's not a huge priority for me. But yeah, though that's my thoughts on Snip Eclipse. And now, the part that you're all waiting for, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is a game that main, like, 
what is it, slogan, I guess, was breaking the conventions of Zelda. And they've really done that. And they've really created a very great game. As you can see, Link is able to jump which is not something that he's been able to do without an item since Zelda 2. As you would know, since that was a p more of a platformer Zelda game with some RPG elements, actually. Uh, Link can shield surf, as you can kind of see. And also, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like the way that Link's voice is in this game. Just Take a bit of a listen. Oh, and you can do this flurry rush thing. Yeah. I know, I kind of like on how he has a bit of a mellowish voice, but he still puts a bit of energy behind it, but it's not like, let's say, Twilight Princess or Scoured Sword Link, when they, like, I don't know how to fully describe it, but he's kind of a bit mellow in this game, and I kind of like it. So... Yeah, uh, weapons break in this game, as I'm sure a lot of people know, like, as I'm sure a lot of you know. And you only have limited space for your weapons, so you do have to choose wisely. What? Wisely? <laughs> choose wisely what equipment you have for what part of the job. Also, unlike most uh, open world games, there is not really a, ever a sense of being completely overpowered, for there are, for enemies do get stronger with you, as though there are some weaker enemies like that blue bokoblin I just killed. But then there's this guy, silver bokoblins, which are extremely strong. And like, I'm pretty sure early on this guy wouldn't even be in this camp in this area, which is not far off the starting area of the game. But. He's here now because a lot of the stuff do change to account to at what point in the game you are. Uh, I believe it takes to account stuff like hearts, uh, what abilities you might have. Uh, try not to use words. Uh, for the record, I'm trying to flurry rush this guy, but that attack is hard to do. I also try parrying him, but I'm not very good at parrying. Especially those, the Bokoblins in that attack. But they were managed to pull off another Flurry Rush. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Some enemies do not give a whole lot of time for Flurry Rushing. Now, there does seem to be an occasional lag spike. Uh, I'm not sure if you will see it in the recording. I'm not even sure if one actually happened there, but it did when I'm viewing this as I'm recording my voice for the post commentary but there were uh, I'm pretty sure you did see it in that one moblin fight earlier and that seems to be one of the most common things that people seem to have flag problems on where the game will temporarily freeze when you're fighting moblins I don't understand I like at first I thought that I wasn't gonna be that I wasn't gonna see it when I started playing the game but I did eventually come I have come across it quite a few times. It's not too major, but I, I kind of hope that they can try to fix it at some point in the future. I don't fully know. But, yeah. Breath of the Wild. It's a great game. You should probably get it if you're 
like even if you're not getting the Switch and if you have a Wii U, you should probably try to get the uh, you know since Breath of the Wild is on the Wii U as well. So even if you don't want to get a Nintendo Switch for whatever reason, you can get it for the Wii U as well. So there's that to look forward to. Also, another thing to look forward to is the DLC. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm not sure if the first wave of DLC has already been out yet, since I have yet to purchase the expansion pass. But yeah, you. There are a lot of interesting stuff that is coming out with not only the first wave, but the second wave seems like it's going to be a whole lot more interesting with a new and original storyline to be added onto this game. So, yeah. I would recommend getting the expansion pass as well. It's only 20 bucks, so I'm definitely going to pick it up the expansion pass, so... Yeah. That's, uh... And all that I have to talk about. So yeah, that is my thoughts on the Nintendo Switch and Breath of the Wild. This has been Link to High Trust Your Spirit, and I will see you guys next time.